I recently became a full-time cannon shooter as I embark on endeavors photographing and filming the world's most incredible marine inhabitants. The Canon R5 seemed to be the perfect hybrid camera for both wildlife photography and filmmaking. I've had this camera for about eight months now and I've used it to film an array of different subjects in different habitats and locations up and down the west coast. There's a lot of things that I like about this camera and there's a few things I don't like and I really just wanted to give you guys a perspective on how it can be used for wildlife filmmaking purposes. The Canon R5 is an incredibly powerful tool for wildlife photography and filmmaking. Boasting a 45 megapixel full frame sensor, this camera is capable of taking incredibly detailed photographs while also being able to record in 8K. I've taken it on countless adventures in the short time that I've had it, including Baja Desert Landscapes and the Chile, California coast. I use it pretty much every single day and it's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it, whether it be in an underwater housing or strapped to a tripod. I love the relatively small body size. The ergonomics on it are great. It feels great in the hands. It's not too small or too chunky or anything. I love the functionality of it. It can be used with all of the RF lenses that Canon's made for it, but with the adapter as well, it can be used for any EF lenses that you might have as well. And I love the plethora of different recording options. One of my favorite things is its high frame rate mode. For run and gun filmmaking, I'll shoot in 4K 120 as most of the subjects I'm filming are incredibly fast. The 4K looks great for my purposes and the 120 frames per second allows me to capture every drop of water coming off a dolphin's back. Pair this with its in-body stabilization and I'm capable of capturing some incredibly intimate wildlife moments that not a lot of cameras can accomplish. If I need to, I can set it up on a tripod and I'm capable of recording 8K video. The 8K looks phenomenal and allows me to crop in and retain so much detail. I love the extremely easy setup to switch between photo and video. With just a few quick buttons, I'm able to capture a photograph of an orca crashing through a wave or capture the same moment in a video format. The best part is my preferred settings are already set up how I like them, making sure I don't miss out on anything. Now, while there's plenty of upside to this action-packed mirrorless camera, I have run into a few issues with it. Now, the first thing everybody talks about is the overheating issues. For the most part, I'm filming in pretty short increments. I'm capturing the little glimpses that we are gifted into the world of marine animals. So for the most part, I'm not filming large chunks of footage, so I haven't run into an overheating issue there. But a few months ago, I was filming whale sharks in the Sea of Cortez off of the Baja California Peninsula and did run into some overheating issues. First off, the camera was in an underwater housing, so that might have added some issues with the overheating, but I left the camera recording for about seven minutes. It began to overheat. Now, the problem wasn't necessarily that it started to overheat. It was that I couldn't get back the time that I had lost. So typically, I can record about seven minutes of 4K 120, but since, it had over, but since the camera had gotten hot, it only allowed me about a minute and a half and I kept hitting that buffer zone. So I had to sit there and wait and sit there and wait. And it cost me about 30 minutes of time to get back to a point where I could record longer portions of clips. Now again, I'm not recording 10 minutes or 15 minutes straight, but, but two 45 second clips will eat up that, that minute and a half. So that was a little bit frustrating for sure. Now, besides the extremely large file sizes that have made me buy terabytes and terabytes of storage, um, the only other issue I've run into this, I've run in with this camera is it filming in glassy sea conditions. Now, those are obviously my favorite sea conditions to film in when the ocean is just glass smooth and you can really peer down into the water. It gives you a really intimate glimpse into the lives of whales and dolphins and sharks. But for whatever reason, this camera struggles to track the subject in those glassy sea conditions. Whether it be a killer whale, a common dolphin, or a humpback whale, it will continuously hunt to find a subject in those glassy conditions. If there's a little bit of texture on the water, it doesn't really have a problem at all. But again, you really want those glassy conditions to look down into the lives of these animals. Whether there isn't enough contrast between the water and the subject, or or the smoothness of the water is just something that the camera isn't accustomed to is yet to be determined. Now, obviously I can use manual focus here, but for the short moments I'm getting at the surface of the water with these animals, it would really be nice to have a autofocus system that can track that. 
Now, if you have a bird in flight or something breaching out of the water, it does a really good job at tracking that, but it's just when you're peering down into the water um, with those glassy sea conditions. So that's kind of a bummer. But all in all, I've really enjoyed the experience with this camera. Again, I've used it every single day for different subjects and in different locations. It has definitely upped my game for sure. It's an upgrade from my last camera I had. It's really helped me connect my audience with the subjects that I'm filming. I think it really gives you a better glimpse into the world of these animals. When you can slow a moment down and capture anchovies jumping out of the water as dolphins are feeding on, on them or a whale jumping out of the water, I think it really connects us with nature and that's my whole goal. I'm really fortunate to be able to afford this camera and to use it on a daily basis. And I think it's done me a lot of good in the past eight months or so. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will happily do other reviews for drones or other pieces of camera equipment or underwater housings. Uh, if you guys would like to see that, just let me know. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you out in the ocean.